Hi, welcome to Elk City Welsh Garden. It's Friday the 31st of August today and this evening I'm just doing a quick video um, to show you everything that I got in the Wilco sale and also to update you on how my beekeeping taste today went. Um, also, I've had quite a few new subscribers recently, so I'd really like to say thank you to you. Um, if you are new to my channel and watching it for the first time today, don't forget to hit that um, subscribe button and hit the bell so you'll get notified of all of my latest videos. So, the beekeeping day was two weeks ago now, and it was a really enjoyable day. Unfortunately, it was raining, so we did all of the theory in the morning. Um, and quite a lot of that theory I had already like watched videos on YouTube about and stuff like that but it was really good having an expert in front of you that was able to interact and you could ask questions too and you know they gave you loads of stories and stuff they also had a beehive there that was obviously empty but you were able to kind of pick things up and have a look at it which was um, really interesting and then in the afternoon we weren't able to actually go into the hives to have a look and that was the kind of thing that I wanted to get out of the day really because you know it's pointless me learning loads about it and then coming near a bee and screaming and running off so um we were able to go into the apiary with the apiary manager but he wasn't going to open any of the hives with us because it was raining so we got kitted up in our beekeeping suits and went into the um into the apiary now i you know because i'm new to this didn't really understand much about how wasps are attacking the bees and stuff so the bees were all quite rowdy and quite busy protecting their homes and stuff so when we did go in there you know we did need the beekeeping suit really and um, it was a little bit scary to begin with because although I wasn't opening the hive or going into it we did have kind of bees or wasps you know flying into us and stuff um, but you know it didn't seem you know that scary it was just a little bit unnerving but unfortunately because of the rain you know we weren't able to actually go into a hive and experience having kind of bees crawling up us and kind of flying around us and stuff so i don't know how you know i would react to that now because of the rain and things like that we were going to go back on the sunday of bank holiday sunday but it was absolutely tipping down so that was also cancelled so we're just waiting for them to get back to us and let us know you know if there's going to be a possibility that we can go inside the hives this year if not, we're going to have to obviously postpone it till next year. But I do want to start the beekeeping beginners course in February. And I need to make sure that before February, I've actually, you know, gone into a hive and I'm able to do it because I don't want to waste my money or time on doing something that I'm not going to, you know, get on with. So um, it was a little bit disappointing, but, you know, that's... Um, life isn't it what's really funny is they asked all of us that went there um what the reason for us wanting to go on the course was and i said to them that it was because every single year we have a swarm come to our house in the eaves of the attic or like on on the outside gable end and i said every year it kind of we get a big swarm swarm around our house for kind of a day or two and then it disappears I just said, I guess they're here for a rest or something like that. And then later, the apiary manager came over to us and said, you do realise that that's probably not a swarm that's coming to your gable end every year. It's probably that you have a beehive in your attic and you probably had bees all along and weren't really aware of it because probably, you know, in June they're getting ready to swarm or kind of, you know, the colony splitting. And it was really funny because neither of us had actually thought that it could be that. And um, it was just really funny, the fact that, you know, we could have been beekeepers all along without realising. Um, but the fun thing about that was they said that, you know, if we know we've got bees here already, I can't see, I mean, I'm in the attic now. And if I go through two doors, I can get into kind of where the, you know, roof is. And, you know, we only see dead bees in the attic area when the swarm happens. So whether that's because, you know, those worker bees are looking for places to live or, you know, I, I'm not really sure. But, you know, once they've all been hoovered up and stuff, you don't see any more for the rest of the year. So that's why we thought it was a swarm that was just kind of, you know, coming to the house every year. But anyway, um, the lady at the um, 
you know, B Day was saying that what we could do is actually try and catch a swarm next year. Now, the house is like a three story house here, so we would need scaffolding because it's so high, but you can get like attractants and things like that. So that was quite interesting. Now, obviously, you know, if we are going to be catching a random swarm, we don't know anything about them, we don't know what type of bees they are, and they might be rubbish at making honey and stuff. So, you know, it'd be quite interesting to see, you know, what happens next year because I guess we can get a nuke or something like that uh, or a hive to catch them and um, you never know they might be like buck fast or something or you know really interesting species that will make us loads of honey if not i'm sure somebody at the beekeeping association will still be interested in coming around and showing us what we need to do and stuff so yeah that was really interesting but unfortunately until i actually go and hive i have no idea if i'm going to freak out or anything like i said it was a little bit unnerving when i was in there kind of having bees around but then i don't know if when it comes to actually opening a hive if i'm just kind of trying to be really mature about it and kind of just calm and know that you know i mean they gave, give us these really thick leather gloves so nothing's going to sting us through those so if i just try and kind of you know be cool about it i might get on really well so we don't know we're just going to have to watch this space but i will keep you updated if i do have a chance to go in a hive um this year and if i do i'll ask lloyd to film it so you can see that i've gone in there so um yeah there you go that's all i've got to tell you about that really so what i do now is i'll just show you everything i've got in the wilco cell okay so if you watched my um video yesterday you'd have known that i went a little bit mad in the wilco cell so i just wanted to show you everything that i got so firstly these gloves here were 50p um, oh, it's all going to be back to front, isn't it? Because I've got the camera set up um, the wrong way around. But I really love these um, gloves because you get quite a lot of grip with them. They're not waterproof, but um, they are a really good glove to have. Um, I've got a pair that are just wearing out now. I got a pair of these flowery ones too. They're exactly the same. They just had flowers on. But these were £1.25, I think, and these were 50p. So, to be honest, for the flowers, it wasn't really worth paying the extra money, to be honest. Um, I got these um, flowery rigger gloves. They were £1.25, I think. The reason being is that we've just got a log splitter for um, our firewood this year. But also, we've got loads of brambles, so it's great to have a pair of those. And also, they do different sizes. So, these are a medium. But quite often in rigger um, gloves, if you get them from like places like B&Q, they're like giant person's hands. Um, I also got another pair of rigger gloves. They are also fitted and quite nice in a medium. I just got those for Lloyd um, for the garden as well. Now, I went... A little bit mad on all this kind of flowery stuff too so i got this apron here it's two pound fifty um and actually no that's not an apron that is a garden tool belt i kind of had this idea that you know it'd be great to have a belt on um with kind of stuff in but actually really it's not practical in the slightest so um i think that was actually one pound 25 i think um, but I'm probably going to take this back, to be honest. Um, I also got an apron. Um, now, I know like Liz at By the Farm always has an apron on and it looks really cool. Um, so I kind of got a bit carried away yesterday and got an apron. The thing that puts me off it, though, is it's kind of all sealed up and I can't actually open it and try it on. So I'm going to probably take this back, I think. Um, but a really nice little present for somebody if you're like... You know you've got a garden in the family and you know you want stocking fillers or something like that it is worth picking up they also had some really lush and um, kind of like knee cushions which were really nice um but one of the things in that kind of brand is also they've got a bag here which was i think this was a pound um but it's really good because i always um keep gardening stuff in the car because i volunteer with brecknock wildlife um, so usually it's just in a 10 litre flower bucket but this definitely is really worth it gonna keep it and again if you've got a gardener like a, kind of in the family a female or something like that 
then it would make a really nice bag for putting presents in. So yeah, I think that's worth it. That's not going to go back. Um, I did go mad, like I said, but I picked up these bamboo kind of holders. Now these would be great for um, bamboo canes next year. And these were 25p for a packet and there's two in the packet. And so I got four of those. Sorry about the lighting in here. We've got two windows and it's kind of, the sun's going down now. So um, it's not too great. Um, okay, I picked up these knee pads here. So they're quite nice actually, but I haven't opened them to see. I am a little bit worried. It looks like they've got kind of, um, it's just a little bit of um, kind of elastic in the back rather than a um, kind of, one that's going to be able to be made smaller so let's have a look ah no you can okay these have got velcro on so you can actually make them smaller so let's have a look because okay these Ow, I just hit my head on the beam. Um, these actually are really comfortable. And let's have a look if I put my knee down. Okay, perfect. For a pound, these are really worth it. So I would get a pair of these if you can. Um, I did pick up two pairs. I don't really know why, but quite often I pick things up in twos in the supermarket. Um, but yeah, well worth it because I was going to buy a cushion. But when you're gardening and you've got a cushion to for your knees, you've got to keep moving that cushion around. Whereas if you've got these on, you'd definitely be able to walk around in these, um, you know, easily and comfortably. And they're there on your knees when you need them. Um, oh, I picked up two of these slug traps. Now there's two in the box, but it's one of those kind of um, traps that you put quite low in the ground. And then I think you just add um, beer or something to it. But I picked up two of those because they were 50p each. So 25p per slug um, trap. Okay, these are planting lines. They were one pound. Um, pretty sure all of you will know what these are. So you have nice rows of seedlings when you plant them. I did pick up two of these though. Again, I don't even know why. You just need one really, but I picked up two. Um, but for a quid as well, that would make a perfect gift to somebody at Christmas. Uh, there's the other slug trap. Oh, okay. So I picked these up. These are quite good quality. In I've got the weed kind of lifter thing in um, this. And these are £1.75 each. And they are really, really sturdy. Now I know obviously because it's got the metal onto the wood, you know, over time that is going to break and that can snap off. But usually with a, um, with a trowel, you never use that much force on it to snap it off anyway, like you would if it was like a fork or something. But yeah, really like this one. And it also has the um, kind of different levels and depth on there as well. With this here this kind of little what's it called hand cultivator i've never actually had one of these before but they look like they'd be quite fun to kind of you know scrape along the ground um but yeah that was again was one pound 75 so really happy with that um oh they had pea and um bean netting for 25p so again i picked up two um, honestly, I don't know what it is, why I always pick up two of everything. Um, there were ta 10 bamboo labels, um, two of those, and I think they were 75p each. Um, I think they probably last a good few years, so that's really worth having. Um, I'm really rubbish with plant labels because what happens is I use loads of the plastic ones and then for years and years and years I find the plastic ones all around the garden in the compost heap everywhere so giving these a go next year would be good um, they also had now I think these were £1.75 and when I was looking at my receipts I realised that they actually charged me for three of them but I don't buy things in threes I just buy them in twos so I'm a little bit annoyed that Wilco's have overcharged me but because obviously I've left and stuff I'm not going to obviously be able to get that money back am I because they're going to think that I'm lying 
but anyway these are a more substantial um plant label now i don't know what wood these are made of if it says um, and you know what actually it doesn't say what wood these are but it doesn't also say it's from a sustainable source so i didn't think of that but it was manufactured in china so but yeah it should say it's from a sustainable wood source if it is so i didn't think of that but i know with bamboo it's pretty easy um to grow and i'm pretty sure they're not cutting down the bamboo rainforest but i don't know so you better check that but oh, that's the thing if you if you look into everything you can't buy anything because nothing's ethical anymore um okay so these weren't in the sale but i picked up some garlic um when i was looking through them a minute ago i didn't realize well i i realized i hadn't actually inspected the bulbs that much because i was in a bit of a frenzy when i went to um Wilco's. but i have had a look and all of the bulbs um from both are in really good condition so these ones are called um sativum casablanca there you go so pretty sure that these are a soft neck variety i didn't know i'm showing you this because it's back to front anyway so if you want to read back to front have a look there um but yeah i haven't had a look at the variety or anything like that um but there you go there's three of those so i should be able to you know get a really good harvest um and these ones here I believe just from looking at the picture that these are hard neck, um, a hard neck variety and this one is called Germador, is that pronounced correctly? There you go um, and there's only two bulbs in here whereas the um, Sativum Casablanca was three lots in there. So if you grow these, give me some advice on these varieties, I'd really love to know. I know um, Paul, you mentioned that you grow um ones from wilco so if these are the same variety let me know because i'll be quite interested to know oh okay so again two of these these are dibbers and they were 25p each now i don't go for kind of plastic if there is a wood alternative however the wooden one was i think one pound 75 it was from the same range as um the um tools that i just showed you a minute ago and it looked like they were you know not very well made basically it was kind of a wood um it was wood construction but over the end was like a silver kind of tip that had been added on and also what's really good about this i don't know if you can see but it's got the measurements on whereas the silver dip well the the wooden dibber didn't have um, any of the um, kind of sizing on and that's quite important in a dibber I think also you know it doesn't say if it's made of um, you know recycled plastic or anything like that it was made in China so probably highly unlikely that it is made from recycled goods however we do send all of our recycling to China so maybe it could be um, but um, the reason I got this was it was 25p and if it's looked after properly we all know plastic lasts forever so you know that could be quite a good um bargain there 25p so if you haven't got one i'll probably say go and get one um i didn't go too mad with seeds because i have loads of seeds all the time and i could probably spend 10 quid on seeds and i've got the same seeds in my seed box anyway so what i did pick up was though um because they were half price, two packets of the Uchiki Curie squash. They did okay in my garden. Only, I think I only got one Uchiki off every single plant though, but because they've got really thin skin, I found it was really easy to prepare. So hopefully next year, if I can, um, you know, learn a lot more about them and stuff like that, and, you know, really make sure they're mulched and they're fed and everything like that, I might get more um, fruits on each one. But yeah, I got two of those again buy everything in two i think i've got a problem you know i do this in the supermarket if i get beans i buy like two two lots and whatever i'm just crazy um i also picked up some butternut squash i've seen quite a few of you are growing butternut squash this year and i haven't you know ever grown it actually i, I did grow butternuts once about kind of eight years ago and i think i got one tiny one off there also this is an f1 variety called um butterfly I don't usually go for F1s, but 
you know, they, they might turn out well. I also got some Elsa Craig onions because they are 25p, so worth having, and they germinate really well, and they do grow quite well as well. Um, so that is it. Um, that is everything that I got in the Wil Wilco sale. Um, I really would suggest going down. They did have loads of um, other bigger stuff that I didn't have a chance to kind of get because I, I had somewhere else to go. So um, I will be going down there again. But yeah, if you've got the chance, there are some really good bargains to be had. Um, but just kind of, you know, don't go too crazy. And like I said, with those kind of that apron and that utility belt thing, I am going to be taking those back because they're just not going to get used. Um, so yeah, if you have um, picked any bargains up in Wilco's, let me know what you've got because I'd be really interested to know. But that's all, folks. I think I've probably chatted on way too long and this is going to be a really long um, video, so I do apologise about that. Um, thank you very much for watching, though, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll all see you very soon. Take care. Bye.